Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company with a half martini, half SMLE hybrid rifle. Now, I struggled a bit over how I wanted to do this video, or if I wanted to do this video at all, and I ended up deciding that I'll present it in the way that you're going to see, because this is a conundrum that comes up with gun collecting, and it doesn't always have to be really high-end, exotic, weird stuff. This happens with fairly common guns as well, and it is a problem of a gun looks like one thing, but you're not sure if it really is. So how do you go about finding out? I figured this could be a, a little bit of a window into what happens with me when I occasionally run into that sort of problem. So. Uh, there are two schools of thought on this rifle. There is one school of thought, which is this is a rifle that was put together as a training aid just before or at the beginning of, or maybe during, sometime in the middle of World War I. It was done because there were lots of old obsolete martini actions, but you, if you were going to be doing marksmanship training, you were training people for combat, they were going to be using number one Mark III short magazine Lee Enfields, and so to properly train for that you would want to have the sight picture from a number one Mark III, as well as of course be shooting 303. You get an idea for the recoil of 303, handling the cartridge, that sort of thing. However, actual number one Mark III's, especially at the beginning of the war, were not in sufficient supply, and they were needed on the front lines. And so there weren't a lot of these rifles floating around that could just be issued out willy-nilly to anybody who wanted to use them for practice. So the idea was a group like the Officers Training Corps, which is marked back here on the buttstock, would put together, use an obsolete rifle, and put together their own effective training simulator uh, for marksmanship practice. That's, that's the one side of this. The other competing story is that this is a very nicely done fantasy rifle because it looks super cool, and there are people out there who have martini actions with this, you know, shot up barrels or um, you know, various guns that they're not really excited about, and someone gets the idea that what if you put an SMLE front end on a martini back end? It's really cool, and so people build these. Now, as a matter of definite fact, people do build these rifles. You will find these out there periodically, and they are completely fake. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all completely fake. I am reminded of uh, the number one Mark III jungle carbines, which if you go and ask a, an Enfield collector, hey, I, I'm curious about this number one Mark III jungle carbine, they're immediately going to go, oh, those are all fake. They were brought in by Navy arms, and they were cut up and reconfigured into tankers and jungle carbines and, and various other nonsense. However, the idea of a number one Mark III carbine is a real thing that was experimented with. And in fact, I've had the chance to see some of the original prototypes. So in fact, I'll link to that video at the end of this one so you can see them if you're interested. It's a similar situation to that. Um, if this is a faked rifle, it's a very well done fake. And for a while, when I was thinking about this video, um, when I realized how often these are made up as, as fake rifles, called it by the way platypus, um, is the, the going term in the British collecting community, I figured, well, you know what, if I can't know for sure that it's real, I'm just not going to do a video because I don't want it to turn out to be fake, and I said it was real, and that looks really bad. But I kept coming back to this thing because it just seems authentic to me. So um, let's go in closer, and let me show you the specific things that I'm looking at that make me think that it might be real, and the things that, well, that you'd look at that you might say, well, maybe this suggests that it's not real. All right, here we go. One uh, martini action, short lever. I can pop that open. It is in 303 caliber, of course. Now, uh, the British did actually convert a lot of a lot of martinis to 303, and they're typically called uh, martini Metfords or martini Enfields, depending on whether the 303 barrel used Enfield rifling or Met Metford rifling. However, those conversions did not have this style of forend. They tended to uh, keep the, the Martini Henry style of forend. So um, first off, we would look for receiver markings. That's a, a good way to start. You know, is the receiver that was used for this rifle appropriate for this sort of conversion? And we kind of draw a blank here because this receiver has been 
scrubbed of markings and then painted black, which could happen. Like I can see that being legitimate. I could also see it being a good way to hide the origin of the gun so that it doesn't look inappropriate if it was inappropriate. Uh, so kind of a swing and a miss there. On the buttstock here we have a couple markings that we can take a closer look at. This is Bradford OTC, which almost certainly stands for Officers Training Corps. BC, I expect, is Bradford College. And 205, which would be a, a rack or serial number. Now, could this marking be fake? Yes, it could. Um, Bradford College was one of the colleges that did have an OTC program. So if it's fake, that was researched appropriately. Um, this stamp looks really authentic to me. This looks like exactly what I would expect it to look like. So again, not, you know, this evidence suggests legitimacy, but it's certainly not conclusive. There is nothing on the other side of the stock. Now looking at this finish, this looks a little bit rather different than the receiver itself. But if we look at this more closely, there's actually a streak of black paint here and the rest has been worn off. And so that, to my mind, that takes something that could be a serious mark against this and kind of uh, pushes it back into the maybe it is, maybe it isn't territory. This, however, is interesting to me. This is the sort of lead seal that's used to put on a hang tag. And this is something that I see in older sorts of collections, especially official collections. This sort of twine string and lead seal. There used to be a hang tag on here that said something, and it's you can see it's frayed off and broken. This is not easily removable, like you can't remove it without destroying it. And this seems to me to be a very unusual thing uh, to put on a, a, a fantasy rifle or a faked rifle. To me, this is almost one of the most one of the things most supportive of this being authentic is that. This, this tells me that this rifle was in a serious organization's collection and they wouldn't have a, a mocked up fantasy rifle. Now the rear sight is interesting. This rear handguard is a bit different than the standard 303 Martini handguard. This is an SMLE pattern of handguard. Uh, and we've got sort of elements of the SMLE down here. Um, this presumably wasn't, well this was an SMLE stock converted, whether it's authentic or fake, it did start as an SNLE stock. These little cutouts here and here are for the protective wings on the number one Mark III. Those wings are not on this gun. In addition, the rear sight is not an SMLE standard rear sight. The sight base is wrong, the adjustment slider is, is different. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not sure what this rear sight came off of. I haven't been able to track it down. Um, in my defense, I only have a few hours to work with this rifle uh, because I'm doing a bunch of video here. So I'm sure someone in the someone's going one of you guys is going to recognize this rear sight, and you're going to probably tell me down in the comments. Um, and I look forward to finding out because I'm really curious what it is. But it's not a standard SMLE sight. And as a general rule, when these guns are made as fake fantasy rifles, they have SMLE rear sights, because that's kind of the thing that you would expect. Oh, you're putting an SMLE front end on a martini. Well, that would include the standard SMLE rear sights. But in this case, it doesn't. The nose cap is authentic SMLE, as best I can tell. Now it's an early one. It's a Mark I, or a number one Mark I instead of a Mark III. The, uh, the, the shaping is a bit different on these. Uh, but that is, that's definitely an SMLE nose cap on there. As for markings, we don't have any substantial markings except for the, what's on the wooden stock. Um, we do have one little proof mark here, and then I'm going to go ahead and take the furniture off so we can see the, what's on the barrel. Alright, what we have here is another proof, 303, nitro proved, and then these two little guys on the bottom of the barrel. Now I know a lot of people like to think that I know everything there is to know, but I do not know my British proof marks well enough to identify if any of these proof marks uh, would precisely specify a, a time period when this might have been made. Uh, you know, hypothetically a time period that could either support or disprove the idea that it was done 
uh, you know, right at the beginning of or just before World War I. While we've got the furniture off, here's the rear sight in its mount. All right, so there. There's our front sight. It's the inside of the wood handguard. And then the rear upper handguard. And the front upper handguard. Well, there you go. I do not have a 100% definitive answer on whether this is actually an original, authentic British rifle or not, or whether it's something that a collector put together. Um, I will say I have seen fakes that are as good as this, and it's interesting, at least the one that comes to mind, actually I have a video on this as well, which I'll link to, um, the one that comes to mind was a Type 99 Arasaka that had a Type 99 Nambu bipod mounted on it. And it was marked up like you would expect for a prototype Japanese experimental rifle. It was a beautifully done conversion. It was actually a really cool rifle. But when I started digging into it, I ended up talking to a, a very notable Arasaka collector who uh, told me in private, he's like, I, I, I actually built that thing like 30 years ago as a joke on another collector friend. And I think that's how really good fakes are often made. They're often Unless they're something like, you know, World War II German, they're usually not made for monetary benefit. When you get to something obscure and really well done, it's usually a retired collector who's really good and knows lots of detail and just thinks it'd be a really fun project to make a hypothetical thing. They don't generally plan to sell them and make money because they're such niche items that you don't really, well, and for the amount of work that goes in, you're not actually making a profit on it. But that sort of thing does happen. So. Is this a really cool, uh, authentic example of a hybrid SMLE front end, martini rear end style of rifle for training in the early days of World War I? Or is it an elaborately and very well done manufactured fantasy rifle? I don't know. I have presented you with the evidence, and I will leave it up to you to uh, come to your own conclusion. If you have thoughts on this, I look forward to reading them down in the comments. Um, honestly, like, I went ahead and did this video anyway because part of me is thinks that this really is potentially a, a very authentic rifle and a very cool one, and I didn't want to pass it by only to discover later that I lost the opportunity to take a close look at it. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want to keep up with all the other stuff that Rock Island Auction Company is doing, take a look in the description text below. You'll find links there to Rock Island's YouTube uh, channel and also to their Instagram feed where you can follow all of their goings on. Thanks for watching.